Aurori is a free-to-play tactical turn-based JRPG built on the Solana blockchain. It's a Web3 game that a lot of people have been watching with almost 200,000 followers on Twitter. The Bathstar Alpha team just released a massive report on Aurori, so let's jump into it, see what it has to say about this game, and see how Aurori scores. Aurori is a world divided. On one end, there is the Antic, the center of power and wealth for the upper elite. In this plane of existence, the elite are the masters of all beings populating the world. The subjects toiled under their suppressors, turning twisted, violent, and desperate for release. The upper echelon of the elite, called the Barons of Antic, caused a financial collapse due to their greed and incompetency. Eventually, an unknown hero, Satoshi, discovered a parallel plane of existence, a world called Tokune. Here, creatures called Nepties were discovered. As Satoshi explored and built portals between the worlds, a war formed between the Barons and those who wanted to make a lives for themselves in Tokane. After a strenuous war against the Barons, Satoshi disappeared, splintering into fragments embedded into each shard of Tokane. Following this, what is now known as the Vestiges of Power started appearing through the slivers of Tokane. Stumbling upon one of these would grant adventurers aid in their efforts to purge the Barons from their shards. Helios, the Gatekeeper, had intrinsic knowledge of these Vestiges, but he lost his memory during the Shattering. As a matter of serendipity, he got in touch with an adventurer named Max. Together they take on the magical world of Tokane to restore Helios' memory and free the people of Antic. Now while I'm not the biggest fan of games taking real life events, people, or figures and incorporating them into their video game lore, I do think it's okay here because probably from what you could tell, like using names like Satoshi, they are trying to teach people about NFT's blockchain and so part of it is an education piece for them, so in this case, I think it's a good move. Aurori's core gameplay is the turn-based tactical JRPG, meaning there is an epic story to be pursued, tactical fights to be fought, and rewards to be had for both the invested and the free-to-play players. Aurori plans on having development cycles lasting for six months where new content is added for every cycle and every cycle is closed off with the World Championship PvP event. To participate, all players will get a base package for every free season. A base package enables players to partake in PvE missions and PvP locations, although they will have modifiers on the rewards here. Tokane is divided into different regions, each with its own landmarks. Navigating through the world will happen through discovering new landmarks and then having the opportunity to travel back and forth between these locations. While on your way, you have to keep an eye out for ambushes from the Baron's minions. When arriving at a landmark, you have to decide whether to enter or continue. The single section landmarks only have one area to visit and walk around in. It'll have NPCs to talk to, as well as puzzles, objectives, treasure, and combat opportunities. If you happen to stroll into a multi-section landmark, there'll be more depth to the adventure. Aurora's combat is turn-based in between two teams of three Nefties. The fight is played out on a 17x7 grid, on which each team has its home field of 7x7 and a neutral zone in the middle of a 3x7. The purpose is to knock out all Nefties on the enemy team. Every turn, the Nefties have a chance to perform a move and a skill action. A time track determines the sequence. A battle goes on until all Nefties on one team are knocked out. As you can see, every Nefty has its own unique set of active and passive abilities. They can move, use a skill, and use items when it's their turn. If you have a higher end Nefty with the ability to trigger reactions, you could have even bigger advantage over certain opponents. I've playtested the Aurora tactical version of the game for a few hours, and it's free to try out for anyone if you want to jump onto their site. Yes, there are a lot of other Web3 games during the similar 3v3 strategy tactical battles, but this one is set upon a grid, and one of the things that I thought made it stand out the most to me was their timeline mechanic. The timeline mechanic works like this, where as you move your Nefty, use an ability or attack, they get pushed further and further down the timeline, meaning that if you do too much in one turn, sometimes their turn is until two turns later compared to some of the, your other Nefties, or you have to wait too long where the other enemy gets a couple attacks off on your Nefty. Unlike other tactical games where you often try to use the max amount of abilities and movement for each player each turn, this one you have to think a lot more carefully about how much do I want to do in this turn so my guy doesn't get pushed too far down in the timeline. Other than that, I really enjoyed the tutorial and training. I think it's a great way to introduce people into the game. It wasn't too overly complex that's going to scare a lot of people away from the strategy game. But there was also on the flip side enough depth where I felt like I could go through the different nefties and try to understand how do I use this exact one for what scenarios, how do I want to build my team. There was enough thinking and enough of a feeling of, oh, I'm actually getting smarter, I'm getting better at this game, especially when I first got that first win <laughs> under my belt. I was like, okay, I feel like I'm getting better and I'm having fun trying to do it. The PvP matches only lasted about 10 minutes as well, which is I think a good goal to shoot for as a lot of people nowadays don't want to sit down for multiple hours at a time playing through a strategy game. 
Now, unfortunately, the RPG adventure mode of the game wasn't available for us to try at this time, but I think if that is also a compelling game mode, that will give a wider audience uh, a reason to play this game for people who maybe don't like that tactical strategy part of the game as much. So we'll see if that game mode can also come together in this tactical PvP and the adventure mode to really make a home run down the road. For these reasons, the background and gameplay of Aurori scored an 8 out of 10. Now let's take a look at the Aurori NFTs and their artwork. The main NFT assets are Aurorians and Tacticians, eggs, nefties, in-game items, and land. Holding an Aurorian will grant a unique visual identity in the game, early access to the game, and boosted rewards over free-to-play players. There are also other benefits such as airdrops, land sale priority, and control of the community-run DAO. Nefties and eggs can be bought from the marketplace and earned in PvE and PvP. Eggs would have to be hatched by using the token AURY. Items are obtained from PvE such as dungeons and completing quests. Items can also be traded on the marketplace. Most items are cosmetic, but gameplay items will gradually become more commonplace as you progress through the game. Power stones are one class of items. Those stones will unlock tactical abilities, but can only be used once. You'll also have two slots available for power stones, and thousands of combinations with the stones will be available. Lots of lands will be available on the marketplace, and the rarity will impact the dungeon spawn rate. The four rarities are common, uncommon, rare, and legendary. Every week, dungeons will spawn randomly on the world map. However, some land has a higher spawn rate. An entrance fee of the Aurori token needs to be paid to enter the dungeon, and a small percentage of this is given to the landowner. The NFTs from Aurori here are pretty straightforward if you're already familiar with other Web3 games. You have your typical battlers, your NFTs that can fight, you have land, you have eggs that can hatch, and you have items that can boost the stats of your characters. One concern I always have for these types of games that use NFTs with stats instead of it just making cosmetics is will the game feel too pay to win? The team has let us know though there is some min and max stats on each nefty so you can really only get so much stronger than your opponent. However, I would say it's probably one of the things where you either need to spend or you need to train or get the best nephews that you can because you don't want to go into any matches feeling like you already lost because your stats are worse you want to make it feel like you have won or lost a match based on your skill and your brain of strategy we would also like to commend the team on the artwork of the game and the nfts they feel very playful and fun but they don't sacrifice any quality or depth to the artwork itself to achieve that Overall, the NFT game assets scored a 7.5 out of 10, and the artwork an 8 out of 10. Now let's jump into the white paper looking at things like the economy, the blockchain, and roadmap. The Ori token supply is fixed to 100 million tokens and can be earned through both PvP, PvE, and staking. The economy will also have two sub-currencies, OKA and TOKE, working as balances for the Ori token. At the end of every week, the tokens are exchanged for a corresponding amount of Ori. OKA is used for financially invested players, whereas TOKE is for free to play players. For the free to play token, you have to be above a certain rating score in order to get any at all. Also, all buying and selling on the marketplace will be done in Ori. It is also required as a fee for hatching eggs to obtain new nefties. A certain amount of Ori must be staked to participate in PvP. All these things contribute to a more sustainable ecosystem, even though the token is already capped. Some of the Ori is recycled back into reward pools. Using two sub currencies is an interesting take to try to balance the economy and make it more sustainable for their main token Ori. I do wonder, you know, we've seen a lot of games struggle. How do we reward free to play players for their time, their effort, but also keep those who are investing money happy and making sure their token isn't going inflated. Maybe having these two sub currencies will help control different levers within that system. Obviously, it's much easier to do it on paper than to do it when the economy is live and going, so we'll have to wait and see. The Aurora team has been posting monthly updates since March of 2022 and explains in detail the progress they've made since their previous post. Even though their roadmap isn't as traditional as we've seen previously, the monthly updates show us how devoted their team is to accomplishing the official launch of the game and whatever comes after that for Aurora. They also have a nice white paper that is easy to follow and with an art style just like the game. We wish there had been more information regarding the team and the white paper specifically, as well as the details about the tech stack. With the game demo readily available in the browser, we find it to be built with a Unity game engine, enabling WebGL. We think elaborating on this will be a great addition to the white paper. We'd also like to see some updates to the white paper in general as it was last updated on February 2022. The white paper of Aurori receives a 7.5 out of 10. Now let's take a quick look at the team building Aurori. Aurori has a strong team with a combined relevant experience of over three centuries, having over 65 dedicated people where several come from titans like Ubisoft, EA, 
Gameloft, Eidos, and Warner. A lot of the team members have previously worked in similar roles as they do with Aurori now. Their executive director Jan has previously led multiple indie studios, and Jonathan, the executive producer, has decades of experience from EA and Ubisoft, partaking in the development of titles like Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Far Cry 4. Digging into other team members, we find the same track records of years of experience, so we're not particularly concerned about the team's ability to perform. It's great to see the transparency and track record of this team, which is why they receive an 8 out of 10. Now, before we see the final score for Rory, I do want to invite you into our private Discord community where we're trying to gather up everyone in Web3 Gaming from content creators to developers to gamers like yourself. So make sure you click the link in the comments and grab one of those 25 spots and come check out the community content and tools that we are building for Web3 Gaming. Now for the final score of Aurori. For the two categories we didn't have time to cover in this video, you can go check out in the report to see that the website scored a 7 out of 10 and the social dynamics an 8 out of 10. There are some clear parallels between Aurori and Alluvium in the way that you're exploring and overworld catching monsters to fight with in the battle module. However, Alluvium went for the auto chess style combat, whereas Aurori does the Axie-like 3v3 combat. There isn't necessarily a right or wrong way to do it, but we're curious to see how the Axie-like 3v3 battle will hold up in the long run. With sufficient strategic depth and a level playing field, there might not be an issue at all, but is this the game mode that will attract mainstream gamers? Aurori has the potential to enthrall a lot of players if they manage to tell their story right in the adventure module. With minigames being quite hollow in their lore department, it seems that Aurori is primarily here to tell the story of Max and Helios. There is a clear sentiment that Aurori's adventure mode will be the big make or break update once it gets added to the game, and we have high hopes for it. This is why after averaging the 7 categories for Aurori, they receive a 7.5 out of 10. So what do you think about this Web3 game Aurori, and is this one that you are going to be playing? For me personally, the strategy game did get me excited for it, but I definitely want to see more from the adventure mode and try that out before I'm really sold and excited for this game. If that mode is built to perfection, it will definitely give me more motivation to jump into the tactical game and figure out more strategies. Perhaps even one day compete or commentate for their world championships. Anyways, that's it for now. Thank you, Gracias Salamat. Join us up in our Discord and I'll see you there. If you haven't seen our Babylon SDK demo yet, you need to check out how this is making it super easy for gamers to get into your Web3 game. Registering for your game also creates a non-custodial wallet. Picking up in-game gold goes into our wallet. In-game NFT marketplace is also a blockchain transaction. Contact us to get registered for a Babylon SDK beta. Thanks everyone for watching.